You are listening to audio from The Table. If you'd like to learn more about our community or donate to this ministry, please visit thetabletx.org. Hello, friends of the podcast. Brett here. And this is the last message in our series titled First Peter Part 2. Um, after tonight, we're going to hit the pause button for a little while for the season of Lent, uh, which is, of course, a 40-day time of preparation and reflection as we approach Good Friday and Easter Sunday. So um, we'll come back to the book of First Peter after that. So Rob Bell, um, I want to start here. Rob Bell in his book, uh, Velvet Elvis, gives a uh, metaphor of Christian faith. He says it's like a, it's like a trampoline. And the various doctrines and theology and, you know, kind of essentials of the Jesus story, he says, they're like, uh, they're like the springs that go around the edge of a trampoline. Uh, they're important. I mean, no trampoline without the springs. And yet the point of a trampoline is not to admire the springs. Uh, what is the point of a trampoline? It is to jump, correct? And, and he says, it's the same with Christian faith. Like the point is, is not to just kind of step back and talk about and admire the stories, though that, you know, has its place, I guess. But in the end, like the point of Christian faith is the jumping. In other words, it's the living to live and love and move through the world in a way that brings hope, life, and healing, the very fragrance of God everywhere we go. Like that's the point. So tonight we come to a passage that um, really describes a practice that is clearly, uh, it's about the jumping. It's about the living of Christian faith. Uh, this practice is referenced in scripture with many different kind of turns of phrase, various terms. Uh, sometimes it's called turning the other cheek. Uh, other times um, it's called not repaying evil for evil or kind of playing off those scriptural ideas and language um, theologians and philosophers and, and people will just call it uh, like the practice of nonviolence or non-retaliation, pacifism, or uh, peacemaking. But, you know, they're all kind of saying the same thing in slightly different ways. And it's, it's really this constellation of concepts um, that we're going to be looking at tonight. So this is why the, the title of my message is Revenge or Blessing. Revenge or blessing. Our primary text is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 9 through 14, uh, which reads like this. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For, and now he's going to quote the Psalms, for whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? And then uh, almost as though Peter realizes, well, actually that could happen. Verse 14, he continues, but even if you should suffer for what is right, uh, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. So here, uh, here's Peter basically saying, like, when someone insults you, when they put you down, they try to hurt you with their words, um, do what? Peter says, speak a word, speak a blessing over them. Notice, it's not just don't say anything at all, or don't respond, don't, don't even dignify them with a response. That's what I tell my kids sometimes, you know, like, don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Uh, but Peter, he's like going a step beyond that. He's, he's really saying, um, move in the opposite spirit and speak blessing over them. Now, just to remind us uh, how deep in the Christian story, how deep in Christian memory this practice goes, because just to be clear, it's more than a few verses from either the Psalms or Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says much the same thing, or 1 Peter 3, the passage we just read, um, or Romans 12, where Paul, again, kind of discusses these topics. Um, it's, it goes deeper than that. Like, this goes deep in the Christian story. Remember Jesus on the night he was betrayed by Judas? Uh, this is the night the mob, the soldiers, they all came to arrest him. And what did Peter want to like, what did he want to do? He wanted to defend Jesus, all right? So you'll recall, he, he pulls out his sword and he starts swinging, uh, somewhat embarrassingly. Apparently, he wasn't very good. He swings, he mostly misses. Uh, not entirely, though. He, he's trying to kill a man, but instead he just cuts off the man's ear. 
Uh, And do you remember what Jesus said to Peter? Put away your sword, Peter. Jesus then proceeds to heal the man. I mean, think of this. This is a man who came to arrest him. And how Jesus is healing the man whose ear Peter cut off. And then hours later, Jesus now hanging on the cross, he looks down at his oppressors, at at humanity, at us. And in that moment, what what does he not say? He does not say, Father, smite them all, give them what they deserve. That's maybe what I would say. But no, what, what did he say? Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He prays for his enemies, for us. When cursed, when reviled, when humiliated, he spoke a blessing. You know, we often talk about um, bearing our cross. You'll recall how Jesus said, if any person wants to come after me, they must take up their cross and follow me. And so Christians have kind of tended to interpret um, the cross is any sort of suffering. You know, this is why we'll say things like, well, this, uh, this illness I'm going through, it's like just my cross to bear right now. Or uh, this job, oh, I hate it. But, you know, it's just, it's the cross the Lord's called me to. You know, I'm, I'm grateful in a way. It's providing and just, I just really don't like it. Um, and I think, you know, to be clear, that's a, it's a fine to interpret um, the cross in that way. Because, I mean, it is a symbol of suffering. But, but can you see that in a much more specific sense, to live the way of the cross to take up our cross and follow Jesus, it, it means something more specific. It means to move through the world in a posture, in a, in a spirit of non-retaliation. In other words, it's exactly what Jesus taught in Matthew 5. It's exactly what Peter is saying here in chapter 3. When insulted, do not insult. When injured, do not injure. When spoken ill of, do not speak ill of others. When put down, do not put others down. In fact, we're called to go a step further, as we just discussed. As people of the cross, we're called to not only not do a thing, not insult, not injure, and so on. We're called to actually speak a blessing, a prayer. 1 Peter 3 verse 11 says, they must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. You know, if I had to sum up a huge part of what it means to be a Christian, I'd say we are the people who seek the good, who speak the blessing, say the prayer, and bring the peace. This is what it means to be Christian. This is the jumping of the Christian faith. It's, it's to seek the good, speak the blessing, say the prayer, bring the peace. Now, at, people often have a lot of questions at this point. Um, and, and perhaps they won't use this, this exact language, but they'll basically ask something to the effect of like, how, how does this practice, the, uh, this non-retaliation thing, how does this like scale up and scale out? By scale up, they mean... You know, how does it apply to, like, nation states and governments? We've got, like, right now, Russia invading Ukraine. Like, are are Ukrainian Christians supposed to just kind of stand by? Like, hey, come on in, blessings upon you. Um, So that's scale up. By scale out, people often are wondering about, like, well, how does this apply to extreme interpersonal circumstances? You know, so they'll say, like, what if if someone breaks into my house and they're like, I'm going to hurt your child? You know, do I just... Say, you know, blessings upon you. Come, come on in, you know, no problem. Like, what? How do I, or, or, you know, what if I've experienced, like, abuse um, from someone for months or maybe years? Like, I, what if I'm just, I'm not there. Like, I'm just not in the headspace, the heart space to start, like, speaking words of forgiveness and blessing upon them, you know? Um, now, I think these are excellent questions. Um, for the scale up question, I'd say, that, um, well, I don't believe there are limits to Christian forgiveness and blessing. I do think there are, of course, times when people need to defend themselves um, uh, to even protect themselves or just to protect the innocent. Um, As for the scale out question, I I think it's okay to just name like, look, I am not yet a saint and I just, I'm just not there. I just can't yet forgive. Like it's a process and I need some time to process Um, I mean, I deal with that all the time as a pastor and folks in that place. Like, and I say, of course, like God's grace is sufficient. I think it can be really harmful if we just hurry people along. Like, well, you know, first Peter three, nine through 14 says, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, it just is clumsy. So, um, like, of course now, now having said that, 
where I believe this practice of non-retaliation, of this, this practice of not returning evil for evil, where I think it applies just so beautifully and powerfully is in the 99% of our day in and day out living. Because I think we have to be kind of careful that in the name of our extreme scale up questions or our extreme scale out questions, we don't use the extremes to kind of justify our own tendency to, I mean, frankly, just be kind of reactionary and, um, you know, treat people like crap. Like they treat us like crap or we're going to treat them like crap. Uh, One of my favorite Christian writers Richard Beck, he said, um, you know, if he had to kind of boil down, like he was asked about the the kind of end point, the goal of all of his Christian practices. And he's, you know, he has a lot of them. Like he's, he's an amazing guy. He prays, he reads the scriptures, he teaches at a Christian university, he mentors people, he teaches a, a Bible study at a prison. I mean, just, he's an amazing person, but he was asked like, so what's the thing? Like, what are you trying to get at? Are you hoping to be like a saint or achieve union with God? Or, you know, what's, where is all this Christian-y stuff going for you? And he said, you know, honestly, I, I'm just by the grace of God trying to be less of a jerk. (laughs) I love that answer. Uh, just, I'm just trying to be less of a jerk. And you know, this is what I love about this passage. Like, I just think at the end of the day, it's so darn practical. It is so down to earth, especially when we can not get too lost in extreme cases and getting, you know, arguing over them endlessly. Like at the end of the day, think of this verse or these verses more about like, it's like a class, like how to be less of a jerk 101. (laughs) And Peter's like, when people say mean things to you, don't say mean things back. In fact, it would be great if you could say nice things and that would be preferred. (laughs) And I mean, and frankly, you know, Lord knows Christians, hey, myself, absolutely included, we could really use some formation, some discipleship about how to be less of a jerk. Maybe that's a class we should offer here at the table. How to be less of a jerk 101. I don't know. I I, can't, I could not teach that class. I'd have to be the first attendee to sign up. So maybe one of you can offer to uh, teach the class. But in, in other words, kind of what I'm getting at is like at the end of the day, I just, I think this is, it's practical. It's about the 99% of our day in, day out living. Like this is about that moment when my kid is, oh my gosh, they're just, they're losing it. They're screaming at me. Like the things that every parent experiences and yet you didn't know when you were getting into parenting, this is what you'd experience. They're just screaming at you like, I hate you. You're the worst. You're the worst parent. You're the worst human. You're the stupidest idiot to ever walk the face of the earth. (laughs) Not that my kids ever said something like that, but just, you know, in theory, um, let's be honest. Like that's when the rubber meets the road of my discipleship. (laughs) That's when I see how Christ-like I really am. Do I go to war with them? Or do I make peace? By saying, look, you're angry right now. I'm definitely angry right now. Let's take a few minutes to cool down because I love you and we're both better than this. (laughs) Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. It's about that moment when we post something online and then people start ripping you for it. You know that moment? Like it's personal. It's personal attacks and everything in that moment, oh, it is rising up in you. Blood pressure is rising. The the hands are kind of getting clammy. It's it's that moment like where you basically have to decide, are you are you going to war with them? Or are you willing to speak blessing and respond with kindness and thoughtfulness? Lots of Christians going to war online right now. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. It's that moment when uh, a friend of mine, actually two friends of mine, they, they work in the school system. And uh, they, I've, I've heard stories, they have to deal. There's a, I mean, there's a number of children like this, but there's one in particular. Oh, of just a troubled child. I don't know what has happened to this kid, but oh, something is wrong. Like, he's only in elementary school, but whew, he's a lot. I mean, he punches them, kicks them, bites them. I've literally, I've gotten texts with pictures of the bite marks on my friend's arm. 
Um, this kid spits in their faces. I'm not kidding. Like, y'all don't know what some teachers have to go through. Insanity. Like, this kid throws chairs at their heads. And my one of my friends hasn't yet received, like, the official school training. Apparently, you have to get, like, l- training on, like, the legal way to constrain a completely out-of-control child. Because um, you can't just, you know, rush in there and, like, grab them. So, because he hasn't received that training yet, he has to do what uh, what he calls Barbie hands. You know, the kind of, you can't close the fists. You just kind of finger straight out thing. <laughs> it's like, like, that's all he has. To do. He's just kind of trying to block the kid as the kid's like running at him, you know. This, oh, that's it. Like, that's all he's got. Barbie hands, a calm voice, and the patience and love of a long discipleship to Jesus. Like, I'm not joking around. That takes true spiritual maturity and strength to love a kid like that. That is returning evil with a blessing. That's the work of the kingdom right there. It's that moment when you've had a falling out with a friend and now they are intent on assassinating your character to every person in relationship you have in common. Like they're doing evil against you. What then? Will you assassinate their character? Will you air their dirty laundry to everyone else? Or will you speak blessing and good things about them? Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Now you might think to yourself, well, yes, the world would be a better place if I did this. It would be better for my family, my coworkers community, etc. Yes, but um, here's the thing, Brett. It's not good for me. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I've, I've actually been um, cutting this verse, sh- this verse 9 short. Um, here's the full verse. 1 Peter 3, 9 says this. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. That's an interesting line, isn't it? What's he getting at? You see, when we are hurt and we respond with words of hurt, we get caught up in a cycle, a cycle of pain. We're trying to hurt them, hoping that in the process, we'll find the healing that we need. But it doesn't work that way, does it? We only end up hurting them and ourselves. But when we refuse retaliation, when we work towards forgiveness, when we speak blessing, what do we receive? We receive blessing. We receive healing. We receive wholeness. In other words, revenge can never get you to wholeness. Only blessing and forgiveness can do that. So church, by God's grace, Let's be the peacemaking people, the blessing people, the non-retaliation people, the people who are, by God's grace, learning to be a little bit less of a jerk today than we were yesterday. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, forgive our revenge. Forgive our retaliation, our character assassinations of others. We want to let those old ways go. We want to be a peace people, a healing people, a wholeness people. So empower us by your spirit to speak words of blessing when we are hurt, to speak words of prayer and comfort when reviled. Help us to be a visionary instead of a reactionary people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.